Hey guys, BCB here. So for this episode of Atari News, I'm going to be reading a review from TheGuardian.com from Keith Stewart entitled Atari 400 Mini Review, A Fascinating Adventure in the Land of 8-Bit. Come on back, we'll see you in a minute. You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy. Welcome back, you guys. BCB here, your host. So the reviews are out for the Atari 400 Mini. I'm going to read one of them here from TheGuardian.com from Keith Stewart. This was published on March 27th, Wednesday, 2024. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. I have it pulled up. Let's get started. Okay, guys. Now I have uh, given my unboxing and first impressions of the Atari 400 Mini computer by Atari and Play On and Retro Games. I want to read you this review, and uh, this is on TheGuardian.com, uh, and it's by Keith Stewart, Wednesday, March 27, 2024, at 10 EDT. It says, Atari 400 Mini Review, a fascinating adventure in the land of 8-bit. Yes, it's a museum piece, but this mini Atari home console, reconfigured from modern gaming systems, offers a compelling retro experience, and he gave us 4 out of 5 stars. Says your luscious beige, orange, and brown, the Atari 400 Mini photograph Atari retro games. And let's see if I can blow up on this. There, there it is. Awesome. There's the original and the Mini, I guess. To a kid growing up in the UK in the 1980s, the Atari 400 and 800 machines seemed impossibly glamorous. While most of my friends had Commodore 64s or ZX Spectrums, along with the occasional Amstrad or Acorn Ele Electron, I only ever saw Atari computers on cool TV shows and movies, such as Videodrome and Police Story. Launched in 1979, these two models boasted an antic video processor providing superior graphics for the era, as well as a sound chip named Pokey for improved audio. They were, like the Apple II, seminal machines for young game coders looking to create new types of experience beyond simple arcade conversions. Opening up the new Atari 400 Mini was, then, an oddly emotional experience. The latest nostalgic release from Retro Games is a nicely detailed facsimile of the original computer, featuring a non-functional version of its famed membrane keyboard in luscious 1970s beige, orange, and brown, as well as four joystick ports along the base, now USB rather than the original Atari joystick port standard. The console comes with a new version of the classic Atari CX40 joystick, which subtly adds eight extra buttons, thereby allowing for the fact that Atari 400 AR games could call on the keyboard to provide extra input options. Built in are 25 games that show the range of what was being produced on the 400 and 800, the 800 was the posher model with more memory and a better keyboard back in the early 1980s. There are quaint home versions of classic arcade titles such as Asteroids, Millipede, and Battlezone, which are, if nothing else, charming reminders of the com compromises home console and computer devs had to make at that time. And there are fascinating glimpses of genres to come, including Paul Allen Eldenstein's Capture the Flag, a two-person Sorry, a two-player first-person chase game, and Mule, a multiplayer colonization strategy game that influenced the entire management sim industry. There are also interesting experiments with producing pacey 3D visuals in the form of futuristic racing sim Electroglide and Encounter by Paul Wokes, which would go on to make one of the era's most fascinating 3D sci-fi adventure titles, Mercenary. While a few of the games will be familiar to those who have bought the C64 Mini or other retro machines, it was often the Atari 400 versions that came first, so you're getting primary source material here. Well, almost. While there's no original hardware in use, the emulator that Retro Games has employed to run all these games is solid and accurate, allowing a very decent rendition of these 40-year-old treasures. Here's a picture. It says, Millipede on the 400 Mini. Take a look at that. Very cool. Uh, says, and while they are undoubtedly ancient, many of these titles, including Boulder Dash and Lee, originally entitled Bruce Lee, but I'm guessing the license expired, hold up as genuinely playable relics. Either way, I've had hours of fun discovering games I never saw the first time round, as well as familiar favorites in different guises. 
Plus, in typical mini console style, there's a rewind function to correct mistakes, and you can save games to memory. It's also possible to tweak the visual settings, opting for a CRT effect, which mimics the display style of traditional TVs, and there's a virtual keyboard if you play a game that needs further input options. It's not exactly smooth to use, but it's nice uh, that it's there if you need it. Interestingly, one of the selling points of the 400 Mini is that it lets you quote unquote load your own programs, which is the instruction manual's euphemistic way of saying the console will play game files known as ROMs, which you can load through in U via USB stick. Most people will find these ROMs on the internet, though the legality of freely downloading game files is ambiguous to say the least, which is why Retro Games leaves it to the user to figure this stuff out. I tested this aspect running several games, and it's an impressively smooth process. The emulator will accept files in a number of common formats and will play both Atari 400 and 800 titles as well as later XLXE variations. When you insert a USB stick containing game ROMs, the thumb drive icon appears on the on-screen game list, and when you click on it, your added games are displayed. The system even supports games that originally came on multiple discs. Plus, you can reconfigure the joystick buttons to match the input requirements of most games you try. And here's a picture here. It says Lee, formerly Bruce Lee, on the 400 Mini. Awesome game. It says, at 100 pounds, the 400 Mini isn't cheap, and its games may be less compelling to newer players who will perhaps get more out of, say, the Mega Drive or PC Engine Mini machines with their juicy 16-bit visuals and recognizable franchises. As an accessible museum piece, however, it is fascinating and well-crafted advice, revealing games I'd never played in the original format, as well as totally fresh retro experiences. This is an industry that has consistently failed to safeguard its own heritage and history. Ofic uh, official archives are often bare and accessible. The many consoles are a tiny attempt to address this problem in an intuitive and curated format. I am now a long way from that kid growing up in the 1980s, but finally playing some of these Atari 400 gems has reminded me of him and the things he was fascinated by. That in itself has made this tiny machine worthwhile. The Atari 400 Mini is available now. Cool, guys. Let me know what you think about this article. Um, I think it's pretty good. Let me know down below. Thank you. Awesome, guys. Let me know what you guys think about the 400 Mini. There are many more reviews out there. I might be bringing more to you in the future. I did my unboxing and my first impressions video already, and um, I'm excited to see uh, what comes next for this. I'll be working on my full review of this, checking out everything. So stay tuned for that, only here on BCB. Thank you so much, guys. Be a good person, get your Java, and go play some freaking Atari. I'll see you later now. Bye. You are watching Ballistic Talk and Blue. You are, you are watching, watching Ballistic, Ballistic Coffee, Coffee Boy. Boy.